Hi everybody, in this video I want to do an example problem involving time dilation. Imagine that Mary is sitting here in a chair and imagine that Joe is on a spacecraft zooming to the right with a speed of 0 0.800 c relative to Mary, where c is the speed of light in vacuum, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. So, relative to Mary, Joe's zooming to the right at 8 tenths of the speed of light. This also means that according to Joe, Mary is moving to the left at point 8C. Okay, imagine we have the following information. According to Joe, in Joe's reference frame, Joe takes 10 seconds to drink his beverage. Meanwhile, Mary, according to Joe, holds her breath for 60 seconds. The questions that we want to answer in this problem are, how much time do each of these processes take according to Mary? That is, according to Mary, how long does it take Joe to drink his beverage? And according to Mary, how long does it take Mary to hold her breath? All right, the key step in all these time dilation problems is to figure out which observer, if either, observes the so-called proper time interval, delta T sub P. P stands for proper, but proper shouldn't mean better. It just means a special reference frame in which the elapsed time for the whole process uh, happens at the same location. That's going to only be true for one observer, and you need to figure out which one that is. That's the one that you identify, that's the time that you identify as a delta T sub P. Okay, so let's imagine we want to figure out how long it takes, uh, according to Mary, how long it takes Joe to drink the beverage. So we need to identify who, if anyone, observes the so-called proper time for drinking the beverage. Is it Joe or is it Mary? Well, imagine we're following Joe. We attach a coordinate system to Joe's spacecraft. And that spacecraft moves along, spacecraft moving along, Joe's here, Joe starts drinking, Joe ends drinking. All that's happening at the same location. If we attach this coordinate system uh, to Joe's ship, that's what a reference frame is, attaching a coordinate system to a thing. Uh, all that, that whole process basically happens at the origin uh, of Joe's coordinate system, if we imagine attaching that coordinate system to Joe. Okay, so Joe observes the so-called proper time interval uh, for this process. Now just to check, imagine from Mary's perspective. Mary's sitting right here and Joe's zooming by. Uh, the beginning, of, the beginning of this process where Joe first puts the beverage to his mouth, let's say that happens when Joe and Mary are at the same location, boom. All right, so there's the beginning of the process according to Mary, but meanwhile, Joe's moving to the right and continuing to drink, and Joe finishes drinking somewhere over here. Uh, clearly, the location of that process has been spread out between here and here. It doesn't all happen at the same location according to Mary. So Mary does not observe the so-called proper time for the drinking process. She observes the other time. All right, so let's fill this in. The proper time interval for the drinking process is observed by Joe. So we want to know how long the, the drink process takes according to Mary. That means we want the other time. We want delta T. All right, so we'll plug in for the time dilation formula. And let's continue on. The delta T is what we want. The delta T sub P, we know that's the time according to Joe that it takes uh, Joe to drink the beverage. So for delta T sub P, we're going to put in the 10 seconds. And then here we're going to put in for the speed that, um, the relative speed that these two observers are, are moving at relative to each other. All right, and let's work this out. I'm going to work it out in steps because I'm going to use this denominator piece uh, in, in the next part of the problem. All right, so I just want to clarify. The delta T sub P, that was the 10 seconds for the drinking process. So the time for the drinking process, according to Mary, will be this delta T. All right, so in the numerator, we've got 10 seconds. In the denominator, I'm going to do this in steps. I've got, in this point 0.8c squared over c squared, well, the c is going to get squared. This is going to be point 0.8 squared times c squared. Then it's going to be divided by c squared. So the c squared is going to cancel. I'm going to have point 0.8 squared, which is uh, 0.64. 
and then I'm going to have 1 minus 0.64, which is uh, 0.36. And if I take the square root of 0.36, that's going to be 0.6. And note the denominator has no units. 1 has no units, and C has units. It's, uh, you know, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. But I'm going to have a C squared over a C squared, so those units ends up canceling. So 1 minus 0.8 squared, but 0.8 squared is 0.64. Uh, 1 minus 0.64 is 0.36. Square root of 0.36 is 0.6. If I can work that out, 10 divided by 0.6 is 16.7 when I round that seconds. So that's the time for the drinking process, according to Mary. Okay, so let's do another one. We have the other, other thing we want to know, uh, the time, uh, according to Mary, uh, that Mary holds Mary's breath. Well, we know that, according to Joe, Mary holds her breath for 60 seconds. So the question is, who, Mary or Joe, observes the proper time interval for the holding the breath process? Well, imagine from Mary's perspective. Mary's right here. Uh, she starts holding her breath. You know, let, let's attach a coordinate system to Mary. Mary starts holding her breath. She ends holding her breath. That all happens at the same location, according to Mary. So delta T sub P, that's according to Mary. All right, so delta T sub P is, well, we're not given that. We're given the other time. Now let's just verify that Joe does not observe the so-called proper time for the holding the breath process. So Mary's here holding her breath. She starts holding her breath. Let's imagine she starts holding her breath right as, as uh, Joe zooms past. So here's Joe zooming past. And at that instant, when they coincide, uh, Mary starts holding her breath. Now Mary's still holding her breath and Joe's heading along, or from Joe's perspective, we can imagine what's really going on is from Joe's perspective, Mary's coming this way. Mary starts holding her breath, and then uh, Mary continues on. Mary finishes holding her breath. Uh, the beginning of the holding of the pro breath process happened at the origin of Joe's coordinate system, but at the end of the process, Mary is far to the left. So the process, Mary holding her breath, does not happen at the same location, all of it, beginning, middle, and end, in Joe's coordinate system. But it does happen at the same location in Mary's reference frame or a, a coordinate system attached to Mary. Okay, great. So what we're given, the 60 seconds, is the delta T, not the delta T sub P. The delta T sub P is what we want. So we'll solve the time dilation formula for delta T sub P. I can move this square root chunk. I can multiply both sides by it. That'll cancel it out in the denominator here, and it'll move it over there. And I'll flip the sides. So I'm going to have delta T sub P equals delta T times 1 minus V squared over C squared square root. Okay, so the delta T sub P is what we want. That's going to be the time uh, for the holding the breath process, according to Mary. All right, so let's plug in. Delta T was the time, according to Joe. That's going to be 60 seconds. This square root factor, I could plug it all in again, but we've already worked it out. If Mary's moving with 0.8C relative to Joe, Joe's moving at 0.8C relative to Mary, we're relating Mary and Joe, this V is going to be the same. It's going to be 0.8C again. So I'm going to have the same square root factor. This 1 minus v squared over c squared square root thing. That's this thing right here. We already worked out what that's going to be for this problem. It's 0 0.6. But this time we're multiplying by it. So 0 0.6. 60 seconds times 0 0.6 is going to be 36 seconds. And that's going to be according to Mary. All right, so to summarize this, for the drinking process, Job observed the so-called proper time. Mary observed the other time. We were given the proper time, and we had to solve for the other time, and we got that the drinking process took 16.7 seconds, according to Mary. It took longer.
Meanwhile, for the holding the breath process, um, Mary observes the so-called proper time, but that wasn't given. Uh, Joe observed the other time. Uh, that was 60 seconds. All right, so we had to turn things around. We had to solve for the proper time. That's what we wanted. The time that we were given, 60 seconds, was the other time. And we find that uh, Mary holds her breath for 36 seconds, according to her. So in both cases, the proper time is less than the other time. And that's a thing you can take to the bank. This formula guarantees that if you're relating a proper time interval to another time interval, the proper time interval will always be less than the other time interval. Why is that? Because the denominator will always be less than or equal to 1. Uh, the only time it will be equal to 1 is if the speed is 0. I need to make one more really important point, and that's this. The delta t sub p is not somehow more real than the delta t. Both of these are the real time intervals in their respective reference frames. Proper does not mean better or more real. It simply means a time interval in a frame of reference in which the whole process takes place at the same location. That's all it means. All right, so according to Joe, it really does take Joe 10 seconds to drink his beverage. However, according to Mary, it really takes Joe 16.7 seconds to drink his beverage. On the other hand, uh, according to Mary, it really takes Mary 36 seconds uh, for this holding her breath process. Meanwhile, uh, according to Joe, Mary really held her breath for 60 seconds. All right, so which time matters? Well, they all matter. Um, if you have a life and death decision to make, you need to use the time in your reference frame. So, for example, let's say Mary will die uh, if she tries to hold her breath for more than 45 seconds. Does Mary die? Well, you know, according to Joe, Mary holds her breath for 60 seconds. Uh, but the time that matters to Mary is the time in her reference frame. She holds her breath for 30 seconds, 36 seconds. That's less than the 45 seconds for death. So Mary will live. On the other hand, let's imagine this really uh, uh, crazy science fiction scenario, which Joe is shooting off this way, uh, and then Mary's holding her breath, and at the end of Mary holding her breath, uh, she fires a laser cannon at Joe, and you know to incinerate him. How much time does Joe need to account for Mary holding her breath process? The thirty-six seconds or the sixty seconds? Well. Joe needs to take account of the 60 seconds because in Joe's reference frame, when Mary starts holding her breath, uh, then to the end of that process, Mary finishing holding her breath, 60 seconds pass according to Joe. So that's the time he needs to worry about. The 60 seconds is what's real to him. All right, so uh, it may seem strange that the, there can be different amounts of time for the same process according to different reference frames, uh, but that's actually how reality seems to be hooked together. All right, uh, hope that helps. Thanks for watching.